to, to welcome everybody. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of our younger folks. Uh, appreciate those that uh, could come. And appreciate it. These things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Don. Now, Tom, can you turn and join me? And, uh, the pleasure to I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the Thank you. Can be seated. Now, I don't know Roy that well. Uh, I do know he's retired the uh, U.S. Border Patrol officer. We've invited him here tonight to have him tell us a little about himself and his career and some of his first-hand experiences and perspectives uh, relative to that career and immigration itself. So if you'll join me in welcoming Roy, I, I appreciate it. somebody from Mexico, I'm talking about somebody who is a Mexican citizen or national. It has nothing to do with his race, ethnicity, or skin color. Same way with somebody from Zimbabwe. Uh, I'll talk about uh, somebody from Zimbabwe. Uh, that's somebody who is a citizen or national <coughs> of Zimbabwe. It has nothing to do with his race, ethnicity, or skin color. All right, I'm going to be talking about Mexico a lot. Uh, I'm not picking on Mexico, it's just a fact of life, because it's our southern neighbor, it's the country where, through where all of the, uh, uh, about 97% of the illegal aliens entering the United States pass through Mexico. Uh, so that's, that's why I talk about Mexico, I'm not picking on Mexico, it's just that that is the source of many of our problems. Um, I want to I want to cover a few things right quick that I call the myths of immigration. Uh, before I get kind of down to the, to the meat of the thing, I'm going to be skipping around a lot and trying to go fast, so I, I hope I make sense. Um, one of the things that you'll hear a lot of people say, especially the politicians is that, well, we're working on the immigration problem, but the first thing we're going to do is seal the border. We're going to secure the border. Well, that sounds great. It makes everybody feel good, you know. It's common sense and logic that that's what you do. Well, um, the Mexican border by itself is 1,500, <coughs> I think, 49 miles long. And uh, I can tell you that it will never be 
secure. It will never be sealed. Uh, I'm not saying that it can't be. I'm not saying that's a physical impossibility. But I'm saying that it will never be. I sat down the other night and I did some math and figured out about how many border patrol agents you would have to hire and have on duty to make a pretty good stab at, at uh, sealing the board. And I came up with 250,000 border patrol agents. <laughs> when I went to border patrol in 1975, there were 3,000 border patrol agents. Now there are about 18,000 and the border patrol is struggling to maintain <coughs> about 18,000. Um, so, uh, used to, there were a few border patrol inland stations on the interior of the United States. Over the last few years, they've been closing them and just letting them uh, a trip down through retirement and people quitting and stuff like that. So, what we have in effect is a border enforcement with no interior enforcement. And when you have that, all you have is you're counting people. That's all. Uh, you're not, it's, it's not a deterrent for them to enter. Uh, because, because of this, let's look at it from their standpoint. A man with a wife and four kids down in 800 miles down in New Mexico, he can't earn enough money working in the fields or construction or whatever to feed his family for that day. He can work all day, but he can't buy food to feed his family. So he decides to come north. He travels three days to get up to the border. He talks to a, a smuggling organization. Uh, they ask him where he wants to go. He says, well, I want to go to Dallas, Texas. He said, okay, it'll cost you $2,000. We guarantee your arrival in Dallas, Texas. So if he gets caught once, do you think he's gonna quit and go home 800 miles back down into Mexico and tell mom and all the kids, well, I, I got caught once, so I decided to come home? No. Uh, he's gonna try, he's gonna try once, he's gonna try 20 times. However many times it takes, he's gonna cross. He's gonna make it. Uh, okay, so that brings us up to the apprehensions People say, oh, the Border Patrol caught uh, 1.2 million people last year. Uh, now they caught 1.2 million in 2005. Well, what does that mean? 1.2 million people. It means that 1.2, well, actually about 1.1 million people got caught once. A very small number got caught twice. An even smaller number got caught three times. So in effect, all you're doing is counting some apprehensions, at least from, from 1.2 million people who, were, who crossed in 2005, at least over a million people made it because they didn't quit, they didn't go home. And it has been my experience that if you catch X amount of people, at least double that, or even triple that, or even more, never get caught at all. So when somebody tells you or you read that the Border Patrol or whoever caught so many illegal aliens last year, you can bet that at least double that number made it here. It's been, uh, well, 1986 was the big amnesty, if y'all remember that. It's been uh, what, 25 years since amnesty. They have been coming here, they have been building up, they have been staying and getting settled and being here, and more and more of them have been coming. So they've been coming for 25 years. How many? I don't know. And I want to stress that fact that nobody knows how many illegal aliens are in the United States. And that's not just the aliens from Mexico, that's, that's aliens from Central and South America, the Middle East, Asia, Europe, everywhere. Now, the U.S. government tells you that about, they, they say that about 11 to 12 million are here. Would the U.S. government lie to you? <laughs> would they have a reason to lie to you? You bet they would. 
Um, I have read sources that say that Mexico has admitted that 18 million of their people live here illegally. Most sources say that 50 to 60 percent of the total illegal, total number of illegal aliens in the United States are made up of illegal aliens from Mexico. <coughs> now then, that's true. If 18 uh, million comprise 50 to 60 percent, that means there's another 16 million illegal aliens from other countries here in the United States. That's about 35 million, 34 million right there. Personally, and my guess is as good as anybody, or anybody else's is as good as mine, I think there are at least 20 million illegal aliens here in the United States. Um, okay, I'm going to go back right quick. Uh, on the border, okay, we're talk we've talked about the apprehensions uh, and, and how many people actually cross and how many Border Patrol agents it would take to start to control the border. Well, it's not ever going to happen. People are, you know, we're not going to hire that many Border Patrol agents. You feel that's a political impossibility. Maybe in 50 years you can work up to that many. And then people will say, okay, well, let's put the military on the border. Okay, good idea. But then what do the politicians say? They tell you about posse comitatus law. Is everybody familiar with that? Yes. Okay, well, the posse comitatus law was passed in 1878 at the end of Reconstruction uh, after the Civil War. And, uh, and it was passed to prevent the federal government from using the military to enforce state and local civil law. It was never intended or passed to prevent the United States from using troops on its own border to, to maintain and guard the sovereignty of the United States. Look what happened with Pershing in uh, uh, 1916, chasing Pancho Villa into Mexico for, for the raid he did on Columbus, New Mexico. Um, they had 10,000 troops, federal troops, at uh, Atlanta for the um, Atlanta uh, Olympics a few years ago. And there was no, no crisis, there was no, nothing there, it's just there was a possibility. 